Oh, God. God damn, man. I just... I hate walking back here, man. I can't wait till we put some gravel down here. We're gonna put some gravel down here sometime soon. I just don't know when. Hold on, wait for the hell. Wait for the airplanes. Y'all know the airplanes out here. They just be. You guys love big techs. I mean, yeah, yeah, we do. On this trailer, and like I said, we bought this trailer from a friend. On this trailer, we don't have the side rails. Okay, I think I talked about that in one video before. How they come in handy. Like what's so great about them? But we don't have the side rails on this one. Our owner operator's trailer, Mike. This is his trailer. You probably seen him in a couple of videos. He drives the black Ram 3500. He has the side rails on his. He has yellow stripes on them though. Uh, the side rails are an add-on option when you're getting when you're getting yourself a trailer. Do I suggest getting yourself some? Yes, it customized a lot of things on the big techs. So what I wish that they did have that the Diamond C does offer, like this is why Diamond C to me, in my opinion, is worth $26,000, but I'm not gonna pay $26,000, nor is my dad gonna pay $26,000 for a freaking trailer. It's just, it's out of this world. Um, so one thing they do offer is on these sides, you can get rails on both sides. Now, I could be wrong. Like I said, I think big techs does offer it. When we were getting these big techs, I didn't have any, uh, this is the beginning of our journey and um, hot shotting. I didn't. I didn't have no say so in what we was getting. Um, I did want myself a big text trailer, and I did want it side rails, but I didn't have no saying in what I was going to get. Um, so that's one thing I wish I did have on my trailer. I wish I did have the side rails on both sides. You can get them on both sides, so that way, for instance, when you're pulling on this side, you're pulling the you're pulling the weight this way. You know what I mean? So it's like you're pulling it this way. When if you had side rails on the other side, it would be pulling it kind of straight down instead of, you know, going one side, you know, rock to rock. This is for a fifth wheel conversion kit on your, uh, for a fifth wheel hitch on your truck if you have one. Okay. Both of these trailers have them. And then if you look at Mike's trailer, which is our owner operator, he has the, the ball hitch, you know, the, um, What's that hitch called? I guess it's just called the gooseneck ball hitch. I guess that's what you can call it. Big difference, people will ask, what's the difference in that, I guess, kit or that conversion? I'll be real, y'all. There is no big ver there is no big difference. I don't really feel a big difference. Honestly, it feels exactly the same. Only thing is I can say that my truck or my trailer rides a little bit higher than usual in the front. So for instance, I'll show you guys when we hook up later. Um, it just it feels like it rides higher. Um, the front the front end part of the actual trailer rides a little bit higher than if you was riding with this. This one's actually kind of connected to the bed because it actually slaps down on top of the bed on top of the ball. So when you have this one, this one sits up like as it as it's sitting up in the air, that's as high as it's gonna sit. But then with this one, it's gonna sit down low onto the actual bed of the trailer. So your space, your gap, your gap between the actual neck itself towards your bed is actually, it's, it's a little bit lower compared to that. That one actually sits higher up in the air. It'll, it probably will sit just, ha just as it is right there. Like this is another option that is up to you. The only reason why I like it is because it's easier to back into instead of have, having to actually find your actual ball space. Because if anybody knows, you could be backing up underneath your trailer and you'll go back and then you gotta come out and check, then you gotta go forward, then you gotta come out and check. You know, you gotta keep coming out and check because you're not gonna get it right the first time. I just, I never know anybody to get it right the, the exact, the first time.
got a slope, but it don't have a mega ramp, so it's not a flat surface. So technically, I really cannot use that five feet of space back there because it used to have some ramps that stuck up in the air straight like that. I hated that thing. But I bought that trailer, cash money, for like $5,000 when I first started. So I bought a truck for $5,000, I bought a trailer for $5,000. And I was on the road, up and running. So that's why I got this trailer. In hindsight, knowing what I know now, I'd have probably bought a Big Tex. Big Tex 22 GN, 40 foot trailer. I think it grows out at like 23.9 GBWR. So technically you could carry about 17,000 pounds on it. So we bought this trailer for about $14,000. I bought that one used. About a year and a half, two years old. Tex, 40 feet long torque tube, it doesn't give you a lot of flex, whereas the Kaufman does. You know, it, it doesn't have a torque tube, a big fat round tube like that one. That one has a skinny, rectangular shape looking piece of rod running straight down the trailer. It doesn't do much good. But they both do the same thing, they both carry the same weight. Um, if I had to choose one over the other, I would go with the Big Tex, simply because it's just more sturdy and I can use the five feet of space I have back here versus that one. So for the folks trying to buy Diamond C, you know, that's great. If you got the money, your pocket's deep like that, go for it. But I already bought this trailer for 14000 I already made my $14,000 back plus 10 times over. I bought that for 5000 used. I already made my $5,000 back 100 times over. It doesn't matter. If you find a good used trailer, as long as the axle is good, the tires are good, the trailer itself is solid. If you can get a trailer for two thousand dollars, go on and buy it. As long as the axles are solid, you should be good. That's all I cared about. Cause realistically, man, the frame of the trailer and the two axles, if those are good, and you good. You don't need nothing brand new. You know, but if you got money like that, go on and get it. Just know you gotta work hard to, you know, make that money back. But we're not in the business of losing money or giving money away. We're trying to make a profit. You know what I mean? So if you can get into something economically at a good price, go ahead and get it. You know, if you buy something for five thousand dollars, you can make that five thousand back in about three to four weeks. Profit. Trailer paid for itself. The big text come with a spread axle. It's got a 48 spread axle. This one, I'm not sure how much spread it is, but to be told, in my opinion. That don't make no difference either. They're both still gonna carry the same weight. You ain't gonna really tell no big difference that you're hauling a Big Tex or Kaufman. As long as you get down the road safely, drop the load off, get your money in your hand, that's all you can ask for. PJ Trailer is a pretty good trailer too. I mean, I think that may be actually better than a Big Tex, but PJ Trailer costs a little bit more. I mean, a couple thousand more than the, uh, the Big Tex. You know what I mean? So if you, in my opinion, bang for your buck, and you got a CDL and you need a 40 foot trailer, I say go in and get a Big Tex. You know, you're right in the middle of a good trailer at a good price. People ask the questions, you know, like what are the numbers? I could tell you averages, right? On average, once you get into it, you should be able to make $5,000 a week. You know, sometimes we do far better than that. You know, we've made as much as 11000 in one week, but you're not going to see that every week. As a matter of fact, we've only done that three times. Benny did it one time by herself, I did it one time by myself, and we did it together. I've been doing my thing. I can't stay the same.